One of the benefits of developing blocks is the ability to nest blocks within other blocks. This allows you to support more complex user requirements by combining multiple blocks together. Let's take a look at how nested blocks work and how you can create them in your own block plugins. The comments block is a good example of a block that uses nested blocks. When you add comments block to a theme template in the site editor, you'll see that it automatically includes other blocks, the comments title block, comments template, comments pagination, and maybe even the comments form. These blocks are all nested within the comments block and are displayed in the site editor as a single block. Nested blocks are created by using the inner blocks component of the WordPress block editor package. The inner blocks component allows you to create a block that can contain other blocks. Let's look at an example of how to use this component. If you followed the introduction to developing a WordPress blocks module in the beginner developer learning pathway, you will have installed Node.js and NPM and used create block to scaffold a new block plugin. If you didn't follow that module or you don't have the required software installed, please follow the setting up your block development environment lesson for all the details. Either way, start by opening your terminal, switching to the plugins directory of your local WordPress install, and scaffolding a new block plugin using create block. This will scaffold your new block code. Before you continue, the scaffolded block code includes some default background and color styles that you may want to remove. You can do this by updating the source style.scss file and either commenting out or removing the background color and color styles. Now open the source edit.js file. To make use of the inner blocks component, you need to import it from the WordPress block editor package. So start by updating the list of components you're importing at the top of the file. Next, update the JSX that the edit component is returning, changing the top level block wrapper element to a div and adding the edit blocks component after the text. If you haven't already, start the development server by running npm start from the terminal in the WP Learn Inner Blocks plugin directory. Then activate the plugin in the WordPress admin and add the block to a post or page. Notice how this block includes the text type forward slash to choose a block and a placeholder for a block that can be added just below your text. You can now add any number of blocks to your inner blocks block and they will be displayed in the block in the editor. With the inner blocks component, you can also define the blocks output in the save function. To do this, you return inner blocks.content to your save function. This will automatically be replaced with the content of the nested blocks when the blocks save function is called. Open the sourced save.js file and update the save function to return the inner blocks.content component. Again, you first need to import the inner blocks component. Then update the save function to also use a div and to return in a blocks.content. Now, 
Now, when you edit and save the postal page, the content of the nested blocks will be saved and displayed on the front end. By default, the inner blocks component allows any registered block to be added to it. You can restrict the blocks that can be added by using the allowed blocks property of inner blocks. This can be done in one of two ways. You can pass an array of block names to the allowed blocks property of the component, which will allow only the specified blocks to be nested within inner blocks. Alternatively, you can specify this in the block settings by using the allowed blocks property of the block metadata, for example, via the block.json file. Either way, by specifying the allowed blocks, you can control which blocks can be added to your block. Your requirements will determine which method you use. Using the allowed blocks property of the inner blocks component is generally used when you want the allowed blocks to be changed dynamically based on the block's attributes. Using the allowed blocks property of the block metadata is generally used when you want to restrict the allowed blocks to a fixed set of blocks that doesn't change. One of the main features of the inner blocks component is the ability to define a template for the block. This allows you to define a set of blocks that are automatically added to the block when it is first inserted in the editor. To do this, you can use the template property of inner blocks, which accepts an array of block items. Each block item requires the name of the block and an object that specifies the attributes of each block. For example, to define a template that includes an image, heading, and paragraph block, you can use the following code. Update your inner blocks component to include this template, and when you add the block to a postal page, the specified blocks will be automatically added to your block. It is also possible to set the default block that is added to the inner blocks component when a user clicks on the block inserter by using the default block and direct insert properties of inner blocks. Default block accepts an object that has a name property, the name of the block, and an attributes property, the attributes of the block. Direct insert must be set to true to enable this feature. For example, this will automatically add a paragraph block with the text lorem ipsum when a user clicks the block inserter inside your inner blocks block. For more examples of how to use the inner blocks component and further reading, see the guide on nested blocks in the block editor handbook. You'll also find the full documentation for the inner blocks component in the package reference for the WordPress block editor, which links to the documentation for the inner blocks component in the Gutenberg code repository on GitHub.